And now, as we've concluded the lightweight division, we move on to the big boys, the men's super heavyweights, 91 kilograms. And this is a fight I am really excited about. Roberto Camarell from Italy and Anthony Joshua from England. You see the big man, Roberto Camarell, entering the ring right now. He is ranked all the way to the top. Anthony Joshua, on the other hand, much less lauded. However, very impressive. Watch this young kid box yesterday. Pulled out a very impressive victory over a big, experienced boxer, more experienced than he. And he's got a very, very calm style. We'll get right back to that. The referee from Poland, Marias Gorny, will be calling the action. And he's going to have his hands full of these two big men. The judges, Bagdanovicius, Jumani Yazov, Kauli, Poji, and Alvarado will be counting the punches from ringside. Let's look into the background of Roberto Camarell. 2005 Aiba World Championships in Mianjing province in China. He took third place. 2007 at the Aiba World Championships in Chicago, he grabbed the gold. And in 08 in the Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, he grabbed the gold also in the 91 plus kilogram weight class. In 2009 at the Aiba World Championships in Milan, he grabbed gold as well. He's ranked number one in the world. Yesterday, he beat Cornelia Sheehan of Ireland when the Irishman's corner stopped the contest halfway through the third round. They felt their man could not win, and they let it go. Anthony Joshua, on the other hand, 2011 English national champion, first place. He beat Mohamed Arjai of Morocco yesterday, who was ranked nine by a score of 16 to seven. Camarel has a very lethargic, lethargic looking style in there. Not very fast. Not much movement, but packs a wallop in his punches. Like a ferry boat pulling into the slip. Both hands have dynamite in them. And if Anthony Joshua can figure out a way to stick and move against Camarell, I think he's going to find perhaps a modicum of success. He's very heavy footed, is Camarell. And I don't think he does as well with boxers that use a lot of lateral movement. However, you've got to hand it to Camarell. He's got great reflexes, as you can see there. Good upper body movement, and he's willing to stand in the pocket and trade shots with these other big men if they're willing to do the same. However, Joshua is a big, big man, and he's fast, and he's strong. And if he's willing to stand in there and trade with Camarell, he may just be able to hurt him. Furthermore, if he uses his boxing skills and his long arms to stick and move, he may also find some good success with the one-two combination. Either way, both of these men are going to get hit. There's no question. And now Camarell standing in the center of the ring. Continues to plot away. Right hook, Joshua lunging forward, following Camarell around the ring. He doesn't want to necessarily do that. Camarell would expect that a little bit. Instead, Joshua needs to start using angles. He may want to start ripping shots to the body. One of the best things you can do with a boxer who shows a lot of head movement, like Camarell does, is go to the body to keep turning your opponent and throw shots to the body to slow them down a little bit. Eventually, they say you go to the body and the head will fall. And that happens all the time. And Joshua's a big, strong kid. He's young, but he's a strong kid. And if he can, by the way, he's only 22 years old to Camarell's 31 years old. So he's giving up 10 years as Camarell and it would be nice to see Joshua use those 10 years to his advantage by using speed in the ring to move in and out and to show Camarell angles. And there you go, there's two big punches by Joshua and he seemed to have stunned Camarell for just a moment. But it goes to show you that Camarell can be hit in the head if Joshua continues to do what he did right there, to throw punches and move while he's throwing them, to come in with angles. 
and good footwork, he may be able to get some success. And look at that, it's only a one point lead for the Italian, six to five after one round. Let's see how he did it. Hopefully we could catch the, the replay where Joshua actually comes in and lands that big right hand. You see right here, Joshua continues to come forward with his feet and throw punches at the same time. Instead of standing back, he's moving forward and throwing punches. Six to five, Camarell. Both of these boxers are going to the Olympics. They may meet there again. There's a very good chance they will. But right now, this is about breaking rights for the Azerbaijan World Championships. Right here in Baku, right now. Winner goes on to the semifinals. Loser gets a ticket home. Round number two. Joshua not intimidated. He's very calm and cool in there. A cool cat, as they say. Now Camarell has Joshua up against the ropes. Not a good place for Joshua. He needs to get out of there. He needs to circle away, and he needs to do some good work right now if he can. He needs to throw body shots when Camarell's not expecting it. He needs to soften up the midsection a little bit. Nice right hand by Joshua. Snaps back the head of Camarell. That was a great punch. That's what we saw at the end of round one, and that's what we know Joshua is capable of doing. He needs to keep the pressure on. He needs to make Camarell know that he could hurt him. I think Camarell might already know, having received two big shots, one at the end of the first round and one right here, that Joshua packs a wallop. Joshua's got a, a real pure boxer style. Camarell more of a puncher. But Joshua, a pure boxer, it seems. He throws straight punches. He uses that jab effectively. Camarell more relying on his, his experience in the ring, his ability to stand in the pocket and throw heavy punches. There's a big left by Camarell, and Joshua comes fighting back off the ropes. Nice right hand by Joshua, and he's able to avoid the other counterpunch that Camarell throws. Camarell's boxing in the southpaw style. Joshua and the Orthodox. A lot of clinching going on here. These are two big men trying to get their hands free. And a nice right hand by Joshua off the break. Protect yourself at all times. Camarell looked at the ref and said, what about that? And the ref said, well, what do you want me to do? Punch him back. Well, that's what Camarell's going to have to do. There's under a minute left in round number two. The golden rule of boxing, protect yourself at all times. Camarell thought he had a, a break by the referee, but apparently not the case. Nice left hand by Joshua to the head of Camarell. Now Camarell's going to push his weight upon Joshua, but Joshua's going to push right back. He's a strong man, not easily pushed around. A lead right hand by Joshua, misses, and a nice left hand. Joshua sticks a left uppercut to the chin of Camarell. Joshua being very effective here in round two. I wouldn't be surprised to see a very close score. It may even be the case that Joshua has been able to pull a, a head on this one. He's been very effective in landing one shot at a time. He's not throwing combinations against Camarell, but he is keeping the pressure on, and he's using a sneaky style with both hands to catch Camarell when he's not expecting it. Just 10 seconds left in round number two. It'll be very interesting to see how the judges have this scored after two rounds. And look at that, 11 to nine, the Englishman over the Italian. 11 to nine, Joshua. Camarell has been in this situation before. He's been down, been down on points, but you could see now that Joshua's style is just so effective. One of the greatest okay, things about Joshua is he's just not intimidated. You can see it. He comes in cool. He knows he's a big, strong man, and he boxes like one. Camarell is used to pushing his weight around, 
However, look at Joshua. As soon as Camarell leaned on him, he came right back off and pushed him back. Joshua is faster than Camarell. He's got better reflexes than Camarell, at least in his arms. Camarell has very good head movement. You got to give it to him. His reflexes from the from the upper midsection, that's like the pectoral region, up shoulders and head, very good. He could stand in the pocket and avoid a lot of these big punches. However, Joshua could show that he's got great hands. And some of these punches, Camarell has not been able to avoid. Better footwork, straighter punches by Joshua. Make for a very difficult matchup for Camarell here. <clears throat> If Joshua could try and continue to do what he's doing and not necessarily mix it up with Camarell much more, it wouldn't be bad if he could try and stick and move from the outside and try and preserve that lead. However, Joshua looks like he's hungry to rack up a few more points. If he could do that, he'll be more effective by continuing to throw shots when Camarell's not expecting it. Two minutes left. There's a little body shot by Joshua in the clinch. And now Camarell lunges forward with a left and he's starting to put his weight on Joshua. Referee is going to separate the boxers and a right by Camarell, a right by Camarell, a left by Camarell, and now Joshua and him are scaffolding up against the ropes. Joshua doesn't want to stay there. Camarell retreats. The referee brings them back to the center of the ring. A big left hand by Camarell. A chopping right baby hook by Camarell to the left temple of Joshua, and Joshua needs to get back on his bicycle. He needs to start using that jab. He needs to start following up with a big right hand. Start throwing more punches is the best advice for Joshua right now. It looks like he may have given Camarell a little room to come back on the scorecard here in the third round. I don't think he's tiring. I just think he needs to throw more punches. And the bull rush by Camarell again. Joshua ties him up. The referee cautions Camarell for circling. And in comes Camarell right off the break. And he catches Joshua with a big right hand. Joshua. Just ate a right hand by Camarell, and he's going to need to keep his distance. He can't let Camarell continue to bull rush him like that. He needs to catch Camarell with a couple of big punches here and secure that lead that he had going into this round. We are in ring B here at the Haydar Aliyev Sports Complex in Baku, Azerbaijan. This is the first super heavyweight bout in the semi in the quarterfinal round semifinals to follow on Friday finals on Saturday Camrell looks like he's a little frustrated in there and there's a nice lead right hand by Joshua that one may have actually scored on the chin of Camrell And they clinch again here at the ropes. And as the clock ticks away, that's it. This is going to be a very interesting one. It's going to be close. I feel like the Italian may have been able to come back and get a few of those points in the third round. I'm just not sure if he did enough to pull ahead with a victory. This could be very close here, perhaps even a draw. It all depends on what the judges saw and gave credit for. And as the score is tallied. And he does it, the Englishman. No. Yes, the Englishman, 15 to 13. He unseats the number one boxer in the world. Anthony Joshua just beat Roberto Camarell here in the quarterfinals in Azerbaijan.
Camarel, the gold medalist at the 2008 Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, the gold medalist at the 2009 Aiba World Championships in Milan, and the gold medalist 2007 Aiba World Championships in Chicago. The three biggest titles in world super heavyweight boxing, amateur style, for the past four years, the Aiba World Championships in 07, the Aiba World Championships in 09, and the Olympic Games in 2008, all gold medals to Roberto Camarel, not tonight. Tonight, 2011 in Azerbaijan, and we have a new super heavyweight, and his name is Anthony, Anthony Joshua. He's from England, and he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with come Friday and Saturday